Let's hear it again for Victoria Rao. My name is Mark Thompson, and I'm the host of Make It Plain on Sirius XM Radio. This is a great day. You owe yourselves a round of applause. We continue the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. where he stood and spoke on this very spot in 1963 and made the demand for jobs, justice, and peace. We come back today making similar demands, jobs, justice, education, and peace. This is a continuum of the struggle that he began those many years ago. And so since we have continued this struggle, there is no way possible that anyone can say, we've come here to react or respond to anyone. Our struggle has continued. If anything, they have been reacting and responding to us. And as Dr. King said, when they used interposition and nullification in 1963, we know that those who would oppose jobs, justice, education, and peace continue to use interposition and nullification today. But we are resolved to stand together to see to it that this is a movement and not a moment. To see to it that while 2008 was about voting for the president, 2010 is about voting for the people. We are one nation. We are his dream. We are one nation. We are his dream. Please welcome now Randy Weingarten and Freddie Haynes. I'm happy to introduce Randy Weingarten, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, which represents 1.5 million workers. She has launched major efforts to place education reform and innovation high on the nation's agenda. Please receive Randy Weingarten. And I get to stand with Dr. Frederick Haynes, who is a senior pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas and he's the author of Healing Our Broken Village. Our commitment to education is our moral obligation. Today is about one nation standing together, and a good education is the foundation for everything else we seek today. We want good jobs, strong communities, and equal opportunities, and for all of these, you need a great education. Access to an excellent education is a basic civil right, but is it a right that too many children have been denied? And this must change. We must do what we do in our best schools, in all our schools, for all our children. And America's teachers, thousands of whom are here today, let me hear you. America's teachers work hard every day to make a difference in their students' lives. But teachers can't do this alone. Teachers, parents, faith leaders, community activists, they are our everyday heroes. But even heroes need help giving all our young people a strong start and an equal shot in life. 
This is why you have a teacher and a minister speaking with one voice. That teacher from New York, the preacher from the South. Because the schools in your community are your schools, whether you have a child in them or not. No more will we speak of those kids or other people's kids. Our kids are our kids. America's parents and teachers work hard every day to make a difference in our young people's lives. We ask you to join in this quest because excellent public schools are the cornerstone of our democracy, because our elders depend on future generations, because today's students will be the caretakers of the environment, the sparks igniting our innovations, the tenders of our global relations, and the creators of our arts, and simply because Every child, every child has a right to a fair and hopeful start in life. Brothers and sisters, we have a choice. We can follow our aspirations or we can give in to our fears. We here today aspire to our ideals. We here today must help our children not only dream their dreams, but achieve them. We here today must invest, not divest, in our kids. We here today must usher in a new era of excellence and equity in America's public schools to achieve this promise for all kids, not just some. We can do it. We must do it. And I ask you to join America's public school teachers in our quest to make a difference in every child's life. Let's stand together, one nation together. Thank you so much, Randy, for your commitment, your compassion, and your courage. I once heard the great queen of the civil rights struggle Dorothy Heights say, in quoting Mary McCloyd Bethune, that wonderful educator, that in this life, if you touch someone with your finger, you may not get their attention, but if you bring your fingers together and form a fist, you can strike a mighty blow. We are here today to strike a mighty blow because whenever this nation has made progress, we brought our fingers together. In the revolution for freedom, we brought our fingers together from the martyrdom of Crispus Attucks to the leadership of George Washington. We brought our fingers together and struck a blow for emancipation from Harriet Tubman to Abraham Lincoln. We brought our fingers together and struck a blow for freedom, the civil rights struggle, Martin King Jr., Rosa Parks, we brought our fingers together and struck a blow for freedom, justice, and liberty for all. And what are we saying for our children? We want to bring our fingers together and strike a blow that our children can have access to the best education. Shame on our nation when the educational possibilities of our kids are determined by their zip code or their economic status. Time out for that. It's it's a new day in America, and we will bring our fingers together to strike a blow where all of our children, regardless of where they come from, can receive excellence in education. I stand with Randy, I stand with the American Federation of Teachers and say, let's bring our fingers together, union, faith community, civil rights organizations. Let's bring our fingers together, red, brown, yellow, black, and white. Let's bring our fingers together and strike a blow for justice for when we do this we will lift up our nation when we do this our best days are in front of us let's bring our fingers together strike a blow for justice so walk together children don't you get weary there's a great camp meeting in the promised land let's bring our fingers together